Oh, you better stop. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. <laughs> Price Sterling bringing Buffalo Springfield to the to the mind stream. Oh. Fucking Neil Young, right? He was right. So look where I am today. It's Independence Day. Say goodbye. It's Independence Day. All things must fade away. I don't know what song I feel like singing today. I feel good. It's early in the morning. It's Independence Day here in New York. And look where I am. This is the uh, no better place. I mean, I've shot from this location before, but I live uh, very close by here in Brooklyn. And what you're looking at is the Verrazano Bridge. But in 1776, this was an iconic spot. Very iconic because on this side of the bridge, if you travel up the river, right, that's the Atlantic Ocean, right? And if you keep going and then bang a left and go north, that would be England, right? And then you travel in the Narrows. This is the uh, Narrows, right? This was the holdoff. This was the standoff between uh, the Americans. This is these are the two forts. This is the only way into the New York Harbor. Right? There's actually a sneakier route that, if you travel around Staten Island, you can you can sneak up on Manhattan. But I don't think that they really knew about that, or that they at least they at least they at least knew that they were coming from the other side. But essentially, when the British troops came from England. They came in the Narrows right here, and on that side you see the gun, the gun uh, posts at Fort Wadsworth and the, the cannons. And on this side of the, the on this side of the Narrows is uh, Fort Hamilton, where they also had, you know, gunships and cannons and such set up to fend off the British. And for seven years the Americans uh, did that under the direction of George Washington, and they held off the troops. Right. Well, actually, the British troops, um, they said that the, the, they amassed like 30,000 um, British troops in Staten Island before they, they tried their invasion and failed. And then America was, was a sovereign nation and free of British rule. So what the hell does that have to do with anything today? And what does it have to do with Buffalo Springfield singing... You better stop, hey, what's that sound? Every, everybody else, everybody look what's going down. Because it made me think today that today is a rebel day, right? Today's rebellion, a day of rebellion, a day of awareness of the effect of rebellion. But what rebellion was then can't be the same rebellion today. And I'll tell you why, because if you look at the 60s, for example, the 60s were a rebellion against what, what's called conservatism, the ebb and flow of conservatism. What are conservatives today are people that want to maintain power, maintain the status quo, because they've, in, they're enjoying a certain comfort in their life and a certain accumulation of wealth, and they want to hold on to it. So that's what we call conservative. And then, then the other thought is that the liberals have nothing and they want to... They want to get a little opportunity for themselves, but they're locked out because they're, they're enslaved. Those, those two, uh, I think those two definitions are very fuzzy right now and don't really hold much weight anymore. But what I was trying to say is that in the 60s, the hippies were the liberals that were parading against the conservative, you know, the, the, the great generation of the... Of, uh, of World War II, that generation of the, you know, where men were men and women were women and <laughs> women were in the kitchen and men were out in the field working or doing something else, right? So what I'm trying to say is that the hippies that successfully created a rebellion against the conservatives of their time, in many respects won and seized power. Now. Now they're in power, and they're the conservatives, right? You see how, the, how, how, how time twists, how human nature is inescapable? Right. 
human nature it's greed right so they wanted freedom they want equal rights they want all these things right and then once they seize power they all they want is the money right, right? so you know I, again the Imran Awan thing the the idea that 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 our Congress and our 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 judiciary system and our executive branch are now all pay for play that the Constitution has been replaced with an oligarchy at the top of it and the, the oligarchy dictates what everybody's going to do based on how much money they give them, right? That's, that's factual now. That's not, it's not a theory anymore. It's, it's, it's a fact, right? So what is the next rebellion is what I'm trying to get to on this glorious 4th of July. It's not to say that, that I'm... I'm I, I believe in rebellion. Be believe me, I believe in rebellion. I believe in in revolt but I also believe that that the, the 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 tools used in the past to do that don't always they don't always work in the future right right the, the past efforts are not an ex can't be used as an exact um, model for a future rebellion that's what I'm trying to say and I believe that the, it's not so much what you do for the next rebellion, but it's what you don't do. And I, I think that that's because we, our elections are, are rigged, right? Our greatest defense against tyranny, right? Most people think that our greatest defense against tyranny is, is the Second Amendment, the gun. I have my gun and, you know, and I'm going to... And that's my greatest defense against tyranny. And if the government ever comes to my steps, I'll shoot them. And that's good. That's that's a good form of it. But taking the gun out of the military's hands is a better way, right? Seizing power. So the, the most effective tool for to to protect people from tyranny is is the vote, right? And that's what people that's what the government doesn't want you to know right now is that the vote. The government. I, I hate when people say that. The government is against you. <laughs> Sounds so stupid, right? But they are, you know, because it's 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 that ebb and flow that I just talked about. Ah, I just knocked my hat off. <laughs> Trying to get in the shade. It's fucking hot in New York. But that ebb and flow of conservatism and uh, and liberalism and whatever those things even mean anymore. Um, now I forgot what I was going to say because I hit my head on the on the tree over there. <laughs> but anyway. But our greatest, oh, our greatest defense is, is our election, is our ability to vote in people to power and hold them accountable. And there's so many examples right now that that's, the, the, the elections are rigged, we know that. These are all facts. I'm not, I'm not a propagandist at all. We, we know that the elections are rigged because the Democratic Party told us that they're rigged, right? We saw it with our own eyes, right? We're seeing how when someone accidentally exposes it, like the Imran Awan case, right? Where all of the lies could be exposed like that, right? If, if only we had honest elected officials that would do their job, the job that we appointed them to do as elected officials. But they don't because once they step over that line and are elected, they become uh, a very different animal. They become. I mean, Barack Obama was the greatest, the greatest example ever. What, which you know, single mom, absent father, working class guy, mixed race, right? He, he was he was the American, the American, right? And this, and he had all the right things to say. And the second he got elected, pow, he disappeared into that, into that conservative fucking place, and we never heard from him again. The only thing we heard, if we went, the next time we saw him, he looked like Ronald Reagan. He sounded like Bill Clinton. Right? It was very powerful. So, you know, and Imran Awan, that, that story, man, we had them. We had, we had the story right there with Imran Awan, right? That was, that was the rebellion, but it failed, right? Because why? Because, because you can't fight the power head on like that. And now, now they, they, they bought the media. They control the, the opposition. Alessandra Casio Cortez. Right? <laughs> they find somebody juicy like that, that 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 the, the, the millennials will get behind. I fucking I apologize. 
So the next rebellion has to be, it has to be something of a Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi, who, who saw it. And I, and I gotta say, I, I Sanders, Bernie Sanders saw it too. He was telling us two years ago that, that, that fighting the legal system and suing and, and it's just, it's, it'll make you aware just how corrupt it is, but it, you don't get anywhere with it. Right? You don't advance the ball because because it's really that bad. It's really that fucking corrupt, right? And Gandhi said, put your arms down. Don't, don't use arms and rocks and guns and bullets. He said, he said, stop what you're doing. Stop to, you, you get, the way you bring oligarchy down is you, you take the money out of their pocket. You stop the money machine. You, 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 you stop advancing that, that, uh, the thing that's making them so powerful, which is the money. So that's food for thought today on this Independence Day. We're independence from British rule, but we're we're totally owned and operated by a, uh, a ten thousand publicly quote publicly traded corporations that have hijacked our nation and are uh, would like to see no borders and enslaving American people and make everybody the same across the world right they want to take our wealth and 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 the, the, the poorest people in 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 the furthest reaches of the of the world and make everybody equal that's the new world order that's the, the vision but what that vision fails to to ex to acknowledge is that the people running that show get so fucking wealthy on that sale and you lose TTP TPP Trans-Pacific Partnership, where the corporations are their own island, right? You gotta stop this, right? People gotta wake, you gotta wake up. People gotta wake up. My name is Marcus Conti, reporting from the Narrows in Brooklyn, Staten Island, the junction where the British invaded in 1776. Peace out.